What's up guys, my name is Ivan Valdovinos and on this channel I provide tips, tricks, advice and strategies for your graduate school applications. So if you are new here, consider subscribing. Like many of you already know, I am a graduate of the Harvard Graduate School of Education where I pursued a Master of Education in Education Policy and Management. In today's video, I wanted to share with you 7 things I wish I knew before starting graduate school at HGSC. The first tip that I have for you is to take as many courses as you possibly can. The reason why I say this is because you are paying roughly 51,000 US dollars just for tuition to attend school at HGSC. This is a large sum of money, so I want you to maximize every opportunity, every relationship with the faculty, every little aspect of the program, every little aspect of the institution. So the first thing is to maximize the courses you can take. So if you look at HGSC's website, they state that students, full-time students, need to take a minimum of 12 credits per semester. And this excludes summer, January term, and May term time periods. Students may register for a maximum of 20 credits per semester. And to complete your degree, you have to have at least 32 credits, which means four courses per semester. And you cannot exceed a total of 40 credits. So I suggest that you try to hit that 40 credit mark, which means that you will roughly take about five courses per semester and then maybe some in January term or also known as J term. So for example, when I was at HGSC, I only took four courses. Every course is worth four credits, which means that you're taking 16 per semester. If you add 16 plus 16, it's 32 and then you graduate. So something that I wish that I knew um, beforehand is for me to take extra classes. So, sometimes, so HGSC does offer two credit classes every year, I mean every semester. So I suggest that you look into that. So take like four, four credit courses, one semester plus one, two credit course. The next tip that I have for you is to take classes during January term, also known as J term. So because HGSC is structured, their academic year is structured a little bit interesting. During the month of January, you have the option of either taking the January the month off or taking classes during what they call January term or J term. When I was a student there, I decided not to take any January um, course or any January term courses because I wanted to go home to see my family during Christmas and just have a break because it is an intense year. And so I decided to go home and forego um, attending J term. In retrospect, I should have taken J term classes just because I was paying this, this large sum of money. And J term is really um, a time for you to explore different areas that maybe don't fit or align with your current career interests, but something you might consider wanting to do in the future. So if you look at the J term website, a webpage, we um, read that take advantage of a variety of for credit and non credit learning opportunities, including courses, seminars, learning and professional development workshops, events, and lecture series. So as you can tell, you can do things other than coursework. So um, obviously the coursework does go towards the 40 maximum credits that you um, are allowed as an HGSC student, but they do offer non-for-credit courses as well. So seminars, different workshops, etc., that can help you prepare either for the job market or develop extra skills that you might need in the future. I remember when I was looking through the J course catalog, there was um, a course on grant writing, which I wish I would have taken um, if I did decide to stay for J term. So strongly consider J term because it's part of your tuition cost anyways, and it extends your time at HGSC instead of you taking that time off to either go home or pursue something different. J term allows you to build those connections with faculty and staff and students um, instead of you taking the time off. The next thing that I want you to consider is to utilize the resources at HGSC, but also the greater Boston area. Boston and Cambridge are a hot spot for education. 
they have a bunch of different um, ed tech companies. They have a lot of nonprofits. They have one of the best education systems in our in our um, country. So the state of Massachusetts has one of the best public education systems in our country. So make sure that you are um, tapping into that learning as much as possible while you're there. So in terms of HGSC in particular, I want you to attend as many Ask With forums and these forums, they just bring guest speakers and you get to learn about different topics within education. They also bring notable speakers such as US Secretary of, of Education, as well as people like Khan Academy founders, Noam Chomsky, etc. They bring notable education leaders and I want you to go to these events so you can learn from these leaders. These events also take um, place across different graduate schools at Harvard. So the Kennedy School, which is the School of Government. They also have some at the business schools, the law schools. So I want you to attend these events um, at, Har at Harvard wide, not just HGSC. Additionally, at HGSC, I want you to go attend the Alumni of Color Conference. This brings obviously alumni at, from HGSC, but also current students in one location where you get to learn from each other and, and dissect different um, issues about race, gender, um, sexuality, everything that you can consider. Um, so I want you to attend this conference. I did not attend it when I was a student because I thought I was too busy, but honestly, you're never too busy. You can definitely make time to at least attend one workshop or one networking event, whatever it is. Hopefully this next March, when they usually um, hold the event, I'm able to attend. So I'm hoping to go out there during the next academic year to attend the conference. Like I mentioned earlier, the greater Boston area has some of the best universities in the world. So they not only have Harvard, but they have MIT, Tufts, Boston University, and Wellesley. So I want you to make sure you take advantage of all these opportunities. Um, and I want you to go to MIT, for example, attend some of their events, because a lot of the time MIT and Harvard do collaborate on different initiatives. So you're able to access all these different um, workshops, these events. So I want you to go and attend all these events and workshops across the um universities in boston and and cambridge something else that i wish i would have done while a student at hgsc was to cross register for courses at different harvard graduate schools and also mit that is something that i did write on my statement of purpose but i ended up not doing because honestly i was scared i was scared that i wasn't smart enough to um you know take a law class for example i didn't have the knowledge of law and so or, or business and i was scared to cross register but you know what don't be scared everybody's in the same boat everybody has imposter syndrome um so just go out you know, um, step outside your comfort zone and cross register. When I was um, when I was doing the research for this video, I came across some like interesting courses that I probably would have taken if I was a student again. So, for example, at the law school, they have classes such as education law, they have immigration law, policy, and social change. So, I would be interested in those courses if I was a student again. At the business school, they have this course called Leadership and Happiness. They have Purpose and Profit power and influence, beyond strategic intuition, game theory and choice. So all these titles sound very interesting to me and my career goals. Um, at the Kennedy School, for example, they have nonprofit management and leadership. They have a course titled The Economic Impact of Immigration. Then they have um, an interesting topic called Controlling the World's Most Dangerous Weapons. So all these topics sound really interesting and I wish I would have cross-registered when I was a student at HGSC. The next thing that I wish I would have done as a student at HGSC was to start developing an entrepreneurship mindset. If you are a student at HGSC, you are expected to be the next leader in education in your sector. So you need to develop this entrepreneurship mindset because it makes you an innovative thinker, an innovative leader, and it makes you create innovative solutions to educational problems. And that's something that no one really told me when I was um, starting HGSC, which I wish I would have learned prior to attending because it would have shifted my mindset in terms of coursework and how I approached my assignments. Uh, now that I'm in a PhD program and four years out of HGSC, 
Um, now I'm thinking more like on an entrepreneurship and innovator. So I want you to start that at HGSC because HGSC does a really good job of providing resources for people that want to be entrepreneurs. And I think everybody should have that mindset regardless if you're going to be a teacher, a policymaker, a practitioner, whatever it is. You need to have this entrepreneur mindset, entrepreneurship mindset that we're able to create innovative solutions. So at HGSC, some of the ways that you can go about this is by they, they hold a... Um, a yearly pitch competition where you're able to um, focus where you're able to pitch your ideas for innovative educational solutions they also provide obviously seed money if you win or if you place in the top three i believe um the competition is based out of the hive um program um which i'll have to put something up here that way you're able to see what hive is they also have courses specifically for social entrepreneurs which the, the one that i pulled out here was educational innovation and social entrepreneurship in comparative perspectives um, harvard also has an innovation lab where the sole purpose is for students who want to be entrepreneurs or want to develop their company nonprofits or maybe they're fresh and they're new and they have a great idea, they can use the Harvard Innovation Lab to build at, build up or perfect that idea that they do have. When I was a student at HGSC, I remember some of my peers, they actually developed and created a, um, a couple of things. So some people created an app for different solutions, but the one that I remember the most was this group of students who created a video game to teach other students Mandarin. And so they developed their product while they were a student at HGSC because they were able to receive feedback from these entrepreneurs in education who are well known. They got that feedback, they entered the pitch competition, and they were able to make that, um, that game their job after graduating from HGSC. The next tip that I have for you is to utilize your advisor as much as you can. This should be somewhat um, expected, but honestly, when I was there, I was, again, fearful. I didn't think I was smart enough. I didn't want to show my advisor that she picked someone that was not fit for Harvard. And so I only met with my advisor twice, once per semester. But I suggest that you meet with your advisor as much as possible because these people usually select you as their advisees and they fit your research or career interests so you know that they're going to be a valuable resource in terms of you um, getting your dream job or building the networks or um, the skill sets to be um, a leader in your sector so for example my advisor was the leading um, researcher in family engagement and i should have picked her brain more because now i'm doing family engagement work in my phd and i wish i would have built that connection with her a stronger connection with her that way she's able to help me and and maybe introduce me to the other leading researchers and family engagement or practitioners or different solutions. Um, so I want you to meet with your advisor formally in their office, but also just grab coffee with them, just meet with them, share your ideas with them. They're gonna help you um, develop those ideas into practical solutions. Finally, the last tip that I have for you is to conduct research. If you want to eventually pursue a PhD, this is going to be critical. It's going to make you a stronger candidate for top-notch PhD programs in education, especially if you want to, let's say, stay at Harvard for the PhD, or you want to go to Columbia or some other Ivy League institution. By having research experience from HGSC and working with an advisor, a faculty member from HGSC, it's going to make you a more competitive applicant for PhD programs at top education programs. So I want you to look into either working with your advisor on their projects or HGSC does have a lot of different initiatives and labs that you can work with. So for example, they have the Education Redesign Lab. They have um, a center called Center for Education Policy Research. They also have an initiative called Making Care Common, Making Caring Common. They also have one on the center on the developing child. So they have multiple research centers, initiatives, um, and so I want you to get involved as soon as you get to HGSC. That way you're able to build your skill sets and you're able to make these connections with these leading researchers and you're able to have them also write you a letter of recommendation when you're out of HGSC and applying for PhD programs.
All right, so that concludes my video on the seven things I wish I knew before attending the Harvard Graduate School of Education. I hope these tips really help you out as you transition over to your experience at HGSC. Let me know if you have any questions down below in the comment sections or send me, send me a DM through LinkedIn. I hope you enjoyed the video. Please like and subscribe and I will see you in the next video.